Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric This Finger Show, where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Prodigal Son, a great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we had the semi full family meeting of Jessica, Martin, and Malcolm, because obviously they're breaking it down like, hey, we didn't need to tell Ainsley because it's kind of like she deserves to know the truth, which Malcolm's like, no, because obviously she's blocking this all out, of, out from the from B, uh, PTSD, and it's like if we tell her the truth, we don't know what the reaction is going to be. But obviously Martin's coming at this from the perspective, you know, it's just both of them are coming. Everyone's coming from this perspective of trying to help Ainsley, but it's just like, what is the crap path? Like you know, because even Jessica being like, well, maybe you shouldn't have gone down the path that you did. But for him, it was like I was trying to protect my sister because she's like, you know, it's like. Ainsley killed him in cold blood. It's like, but couldn't you have said self-defense or something like that? It's like, well, yeah, you do work with cops all the time. It's kind of what Martin's saying. And, oh, here you are lying to them. I, I love that whole situation, though, of him being like, yeah. He even kind of throws Mar – uh, Martin kind of throws Malcolm under the bus being like, oh, you know, here you are kind of being so tight lip all these secrets. Too bad you couldn't have been like that back in 98. It's like, oh, you're all buddy-buddy with the cops and everything. But uh, Ainsley, you're protected, sure. But you kind of didn't have to – almost kind of like – he brought it up beforehand where he made it seem like, oh, no, I'm not that type of dad who holds resentment. But him throwing this line out there is almost like a – it's him trying to be jokey. But it's like there's some part of him that is pissed at Malcolm. It's like you are my son and I love you. But there is a part of me that just is pissed that will always hold a little bit of resentment toward you because you turned me in. It's like betrayed by my own son. Even though when he got arrested, he had a smile on his face. I guess just so much has happened. After like 20 uh, plus years, I guess eventually you would just kind of crack and just be like, eh. I can't be there with my family considering everything that's going on. Like, you're trapped behind all these walls for all these years. I mean, at one point in time, him and Malcolm, you know, Malcolm visited him from time to time, but did eventually Malcolm just stopped. Uh, wasn't it like nine years ago or something like that when, like, Malcolm just up and just stopped visiting him in general? I could be mistaken, but um, Malcolm is still adamant about not telling Ainsley. And so, obviously, he gets a new case. Obviously, the place they go to, it's like, oh, this place is a little haunted and everything. It's like, oh, it's, it's, um, you know, Malcolm's just excited about the opportunity to jump right into a case. Um, ends up being this dude named Lyle, who's kind of like, a, he's an architect. Uh, and there's a dude named Ramon, who's played by uh, uh, the actor. I know he was in uh, Law & Order SVU for a long time. I know he was also uh, one of the main characters in, or, uh, I think he was labeled as a main character in Hemlock Grove. So he's seen him in plenty of things. I think the actor's real name is like Joel something, if I'm not mistaken. I could be, well, I could be mistaken. But, um, and you can immediately tell, like, there was this animosity between Ainsley and, um, uh, Malcolm when he was talking, like, hey, are you okay? She's like, yeah. Like, he's like, are you, so how are you? She's like, busy. Shouldn't you be? And so she was a little snappy with him. And I was like, oh, what's that about? Because I was wondering if it has something to do with, like, the fact that she knows that they're hiding something from her. So I was wondering if it has something to do with that. But she confides in Malcolm later on by talking about the fact is that she's not sleeping. But she's like, yeah, I kind of know all about that and how stir crazy, um, that can all make that can make you but um initially he wants to talk to her about trying to get some um because obviously they talk to what was her name karina and like wendell they're the people that live upstairs which wendell's kind of obsessed with serial killers which is like it's sad that him and uh, malcolm didn't get enough time to really talk to each other because like if they had gotten the opportunity i think they would have probably really hit it off because he's like oh my god that's all this particular serial killer oh my god he's like a oh that's a deep cut amongst like pe people fascinated with serial killers but um, I feel like they would have really hit it off if they had more time to go. It's kind of a uh, that could have been a budding friendship or whatever. But um, obviously, Malcolm looking at Ainsley's footage ended up seeing like, hey, Ramon doesn't have his cufflink, and so it's like the uh, victim Lyle had a slash across his face. So Malcolm kind of pieces that together of like, okay. But what was also interesting though is he wanted to talk to Ainsley because Ainsley's like she's remembering bits and pieces of that night. Uh, you know, when Endicott died, but, like, she can't remember everything, and so it's kind of confusing her with the little bit she does remember, and he's like, the truth is, and he couldn't bring himself to do it, because for him, it's like, telling Ainsley the truth about what she did and who she, that she's a killer, it's like, it's, it's like 
what it messed him up when he learned the truth about his dad. You know, he said Damon's his dad. It's like it's not on me. It's on you. You're the one that ended up being what you are. You want to say it's just because I turned you in? It's like no, because of what you are and what that did to me. Because he talked about it. His dad was his hero. He wanted to be everything like his dad. He wanted to be so much like his dad to have that. It was the ultimate betrayal of like finding out like not only is your dad a killer, he's a monster. You know, and it's like to see this person that's always been your dad as this monster. It, it's enough to mess anybody up. And he wouldn't want that to happen in Ainsley because. Because Ainsley will start seeing herself that way. You know, she won't remember, like, it, you know, it, it'll make her, you know, make her question it. I mean, I'm sure just the way Jessica and Malcolm kind of look at her a little bit of, like, we don't know if you can end up snapping and kind of going down that path again. You know, maybe, you know, maybe, uh, you know, killing Endicott awoke something in you, which that's a whole conversation we'll get to later. But um, what was interesting, though, is, you know, Malcolm goes to investigate the crime scene and ends up finding Ramon's um, cufflink. But then he, you know, follows someone and then immediately gets pushed down the elevator shaft. I was like, oh, shit. But then it's like, oh, he's okay. I was like, oh, man. And then there's a whole thing of like, oh, you might have a mild. He's like, I have a mild concussion. It's like, no. Like, the doctor's saying, like, there could be more to that. It's like, there's there's a difference. You know, but it's like Malcolm's ready to jump back on the case. But then when they, like, confront Ramon. And I like this. Like, they are, like, going there. And then, like, the ultimate tag team. Bam, bam, bam. And even later on, JT's like, you guys were on fire. That should have been a key sign right there. But it's like, oh, Malcolm, are you okay? Oh, yeah, you should go home and rest. I'm like, okay. He goes home, and it's like, oh, Ainsley's looking a little different. I was like, what? Jessica's acting a little different. I was like, what's going on here? And then his dad walks in, and it's like, wait, what? I was like, but Malcolm doesn't realize that something's wrong. He has this feeling like, yeah, something's kind of wrong or unfamiliar. And you're like, what happened? He's like, I fell down the elevator shaft. Oh, my God, how far? Eh, three, four stories? And then, you know, it turns out in this situation, like, I, I, love, I love the alternate reality thing. Because in the moment this happened, I was like... Because at first, I was wondering whether he, like, he was going to phase in and out. The moment, like, his head started hurting, I was thinking, like, okay, so, like, he's seeing shit that's not there. But then it's not until the Danny stuff that I was like, you're at the bottom of the elevator shaft. You're unconscious this entire time. Like, this is you ha after your concussion, like, in a dream state. So this whole re alternate reality is a dream, a manifestation of his subconscious. But, uh, yeah, but it was some interesting things, like, that, um, obviously his dad was never caught for being a serial killer, um, Ainsley's a doctor, which is interesting, and I, that could speak volumes, because maybe subconsciously Malcolm is, like, Ainsley's potentially following down the path to their dad, um, we also have Danny and Malcolm being a thing, and it's like, because on some level he's always felt that connection with Danny, but he's just never been able to, I mean, especially under the current circumstances, he can never really ever be fully honest with her, but it's like, in this, it's kind of like, it's the perfect reality because he gets everything, you know, he gets, not only is, he's not just a criminal profile, he, you know, criminal psychologist profile, like, he's also... You know, he's actually a detective, and I just I like how everything's different in this world. Because I was wondering at first, like, because the moment the Danny stuff happened, that's where I was like, because I, like I said, I thought he was bleeding in and out, but like whether he was just kind, of, like I thought like it's like well he'd start seeing shit that's not there because of his concussion, but like I said, he's unconscious the entire time, and um. But the real world is kind of bleeding in, but he's thinking, like, because at first he's like, no, 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 I got to solve this Lyle thing. It's important. But Danny was like, all the cases are important. He's like, sorry, it's just, uh, he's like, I, I think I was becoming a little too obsessed and a little too attached to this one. But um, and then later on, when they confront Karina, like, they're doing their thing again. And that's what I meant by earlier, when it's like, they're so in sync, they're so on fire, that that should have been the key sign, because they're a couple, and it's supposed to be like, yeah, they're such a good tag team together, so, uh, it's actually a really sweet thing, because it's like, honestly, it's something the show's been setting up for a while, like, there's obvious hints of, like, Malcolm has a thing for, I think Danny has a thing for Malcolm, but I think she's also trying to be, like, uh, like, kind of keep her distance, just like the whole Gil and Jessica thing, I think it's kind of, I think she tries to follow the same thing, even though she finds herself, I think, potentially catching feelings for Malcolm, because what makes her relationship interesting, too, is because I think she's one of the few friends Malcolm has, you know, he doesn't have many people he can honestly call a friend, a lot of people, you know, obviously, like, um, his old friend, like, from season one that, like, we got introduced to in that one episode, that's about it. But, like, he doesn't really have many friends considering, you know, any friends he did have, he lost all those years ago. And when it came out that, oh, his dad's a serial killer. Um, but then also, like, you know, so Malcolm is intent on 
solving this case and then he gets a call from Claremont it's like oh someone wants to see at first I was like who's this going to be I was like is it going to actually be Malcolm and it's going to be this trippy thing of like wait actually I've warped this even more because in actuality I'm here in Claremont and I've been thinking I'm a detective but it's me being crazy and they're actually coming to me for it. like that in this circumstance that he's his dad in the sense that like, oh, I'm the one that's locked up and the police come to me for information very Hannibal Lecter like which I never thought about that I get, I'm stupid. I never clicked like two and two together about the whole Hannibal angle to this until I've watched Silence of the Lamb like for all the way through for the first time. And I was like, right, this is very like, I think Hannibal Lecter inspired to a certain extent, obviously with its own like its own twist and its own thing with it. But for it to be revealed to be Gil, I was like, whoa, Gil's a killer or something? It's like, no, because this is like the same th reality. It's, th it's the same set of events, but things have been altered. Gil looks crazy because he went there because Mar Malcolm had called him and was like oh I think my dad's a killer and but Gil got drugged instead of Malcolm telling him not to drink the tea he ended up drinking it and now he ended up a little batshit crazy so he's the only one that knows what Martin really is but it's like oh and you know Martin just happens to show up and it's like son what, what are you doing here even helping Malcolm with the case because Malcolm realizes like wait I'm at the bottom of the elevator shaft he realizes what's going on so he's like my mind's doing all this, I need to solve this case and then I'll be able to wake up from the dream. Because um, they ended up finding, sadly, they ended up finding Wendell dead, so, and that he doesn't think it's Karina, but, because even during the conversation Karina was like, I don't fit your profile. He was almost like, wait, what? She's like, and then, then like, the conversation kind of skipped along, but he was like, wait, what? You know, so it's kind of a little bit of like, you know, his brain trying to like break through to him. But uh, it is interesting because it's like, oh my god, I get to play detective with my son. It's like, oh, so this is a crime scene, huh? Which is funny considering, I guess, like, in, in a sense, he's never been to this side of the crime scene before. It's like, yeah, I've been here when there's a crime scene, but I've never been here when the cops show up. So, but then Malcolm starts piecing things together. It's like, there was that statue that Karina had made that it was like, oh, she's like, it's supposed to be like a 3D dimensional representation of her vagina. And I love that when they were at the elevator, JD was like, I don't get how that's supposed to be her vagina. But now it's like, now Malcolm is realizing like, there's been a representation in his uh, dream that it's like, there's been nothing but swans all over the place. And it's like, you know, it's like, oh, in the words of uh, Freud, a swan just might be a swan. And even him warning JT, like, oh, yeah, I'm like, I think Malcolm might be having a psychotic breakdown. But I also love that JT was like, hey, thanks for helping me on my backswing and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, that's so awkward because, like, it just, it makes me, it's a, it's a juxtaposition of, like, JT last season when, when, uh, when they were on a conference call and, like, uh, Martin was like, wait a minute, is that JT? And JT was almost like, he knows my name. You know, like, I like that. Which is also interesting, too, because, like, obviously, like, Malcolm and Danny dating in this world, and obviously it's like, hey, you know, Martin just got close to her, what, last episode? Or was that episode before last? I don't remember now. I'm oh, was the episode, episode before last? Yes, the episode before last. Right, sorry. Uh, a little scrambled in my head about that. But, um... What was really interesting, though, is when, you know, Malcolm eventually ends up figuring everything out because he realizes what this was all about. It's like, why did they kill Wendell? And it turns out, like, because he obviously went to go to see the swans, in particular the daughter, but then it's like, no, what he meant to, came to see was Rupert, the dad, who is from Breaking Bad. Uh, I feel like there's something else I know him from. I feel like there was something more recent I saw him in. I don't remember. I'm trying to remember. Was it Ozark? Was he in season three of Ozark or something? I, I feel like it was something of that. Because I, I think he's in Better Call Saul, but I haven't seen a lot of Better Call Saul. I've only seen a little bit, but I've Breaking Bad's one thing. I feel like there was something more recent. It might have been Ozark, but it might have been something else. I don't remember what it was I've seen him in recently. But, um, yeah, it turns out Rupert, the serial killer that was referenced earlier in the episode, um, is like, yeah, he went... Uh, he was active in like what 1963 but then he was never caught and now it's like Wendell was writing a book about and it's like he ended up discovering the identity and for him you know Rupert's like I want to protect my daughter like I don't want her to find out what I've become which it's interesting because maybe on the, on the flip side of that I mean well I guess it makes sense in the grand scheme of things because the exact thing happened with Malcolm and Martin where Martin was trying to hide from his, you know, it's like, but now it's, it's so interesting because it's like, he kind of embraces that side of himself. I guess it's because for so long he had to hide it, but now it's like, oh, everyone knows what I am, so I can just embrace the psychopath that I am. 
Uh, but obviously, it also draws some parallels between like what um, Malcolm trying to do for Ainsley, trying to prevent her from finding out the truth, that, you know, about her circumstances. So, but obviously, for Malcolm, even though it's like, oh, we found the killer, he ended up shooting Rupert, he fell down the shaft, but it's like it's not over, and he's like, this isn't making any sense. But then, like, the reality tries to bite him, like draw him back in by being like, no, no. No, no, come on, stay and seducing him. It's like, oh, it's all, it's all happy, it's wonderful. Oh, we're celebrating you caught the killer. Oh, look at this. Like, Ainsley's a doctor, and my boy's out here, you know, saving the day and everything. So, it's a happy family. What Malcolm wanted. But then, once again, reality's bleeding through, and he walks towards the basement where that trunk is. And, you know, Martin's there being his subconscious, being like, you don't have to go back. Like, everything here is what you want it to be. Isn't this what you want it? But for Malcolm, it's all a lie. Like, this isn't a reality where you weren't a serial killer. You know, it's what I wished for. A reality where uh, I wanted, where I didn't know. And for him, it's like, you know, it doesn't take away from what Martin is, you know? Because just because you don't know that he's a serial killer doesn't make it so that he's like remembering. He's like, there's a girl and there's a woman in this chest, this trunk. That's suffering right now, and that suffering is real. I can try and take away, like, you know, because it's taking away his own suffering, knowing the truth about everything and just the problems and the pain it's caused him over the years. But it's still like there's someone in there, you know, that's suffering. And because of what he did, he was able to save her, to stop her suffering. Granted, a lot of stuff came about because of everything, but it's still, I'm a detective. I seek the truth. But it's like, if you break this reality, Danny, you know? Someone you can finally be honest with in this world can't do that in your world. So, you know, and if you do like you, he's like, you, and it's your fault. It's like, OK, think about that when you're kind of alone and have no one. And it's like you have a choice. You know, remember that you had a choice. But for Malcolm, it's like, no, I didn't, you know, and he opens the chest and he wakes up. Luckily, he was able to stop the elevator because it was interesting, too, because obviously there was the bones beside him. And obviously, he's, it's like thankful. It's like, oh, thanks to these bones being down there, I was able to stop the elevator from crushing me. But then he comes out wounded. They're like, hey, are you OK? He's like, Danny, when's the last time we talked? She's like, 20 minutes ago. I was like, OK, so here, here's his, is that a human skull? Yeah, so I found out who the killer is. And they end up arresting Rupert. Um... You know, his daughter being like, wait, what's going on? What's happening? So it is pretty damn impressive. It's like, hey, you were able to catch a killer from just a dream. There's also, the, it looks like everyone got filled in a little bit about his dream. Because it's like, oh, Gil's not too happy about being locked up in Claremont. It's like, yeah, but he was rocking uh, the cardigan. It's like, yeah, that man's going to die in a turtleneck. And it's like, yeah. But then she was like, but what about me? It's like, what was I What was I like in this dream of yours? Was I different? And he, Malcolm was like, yes. And no. And she's like, what does that even mean? He's like, it dream stuff. It's complicated. You know, I wouldn't want to bore you. And she's like, yeah, well, you never, uh, that is impossible because you're like, you never, you would never bore me, Malcolm. And it's like, obviously, she said the exact same thing in his dream. And that makes that just hit a little harder. Um, does she often call him? Well, I think when she's around other people, she calls him bright. But she, she has, uh, I guess I never noticed it until that moment because she called him Malcolm. She was like, good night, Malcolm. I was like, does she often, she doesn't often call him Malcolm. Like, she more often than not will call, but usually it's under, like, a hey, bright is what she'll usually call him, you know? It's actually sad, too, because in that dream, he was able to embrace his last name. He didn't have to change his name to Bright. He was able to be like, oh, I could be Malcolm Whitley. You know, it didn't, it didn't carry the stigma that it does, you know? And that's, you know, it, it, it's a hard situation. It was like, it was a nice dream, and it's like, could that ever be a reality? No, because... I, I would always be constantly lying to Danny. I could never open up to her because, you know, I'm not that Malcolm. That Malcolm where he's ignorant and, you know, doesn't know what he knows. It also makes you wonder, like, in that reality, because we never tapped into that. Did, was Ainsley not, like, because finding out about their dad being a killer messed them both up in their own right, you know? Malcolm's always been caught on caught up in how it messed him up. Never, I guess it never really crossed his mind, like I said, because Ainsley's kind of like the quote-unquote normal one. So I guess it never really crossed his mind to think, hey, maybe, you know, it's kind of affected her in her own right. Like I said, we saw elements of it in season one, but I don't think Malcolm quite caught onto those elements. But um, in the grand scheme of things... It makes you wonder, like, did Ainsley kind of more so follow in her father's footstep? Did he, was it, in that reality, was it like, ah, uh, like father, like daughter? Was it a lot more like that? Maybe. Um, who knows? I, I'm curious. 
because maybe she didn't go down that path because she wasn't screwed up because Malcolm wasn't screwed up either because none of them knew the truth about obviously it kind of implies like hey he probably didn't stop killing he probably kept killing so other than like the 23 victims he has in reality he could have had even more if he continued over those years we don't know if he kind of went on a break I mean there's a potential he could have because Rupert eventually stopped just because it's like well I don't want my children to find out and maybe after Malcolm potentially almost find out it's like well I'm gonna get this one last victim and we're good you know, so, because truth be told is, Endicott never got, will be in their world, so Ainsley would never have been in a position where she had to kill him, and even if he did, like, their dad was out and about, able to kind of handle things on his own, right, but those paths would have never crossed, because Eve's sister would have gotten, he would have killed Eve's sister instead of letting her go, just because of the whole, the whole Malcolm thing, threw that whole thing into, uh, threw a whole wrench into that whole thing, but it's just interesting to think about how deep the changes would have gone. But uh, Malcolm's there, and he sees Ainsley wait for him. Immediately, my thought is, like, Malcolm's going to confess to her, but she's going to be like, I already know. Either dad or mom told me the truth, or I remembered. I didn't know. I was almost halfway expecting, and I, I made reference to this in something else. It might have been this, uh, the Mr. Brooks movie. Uh, spoilers for Mr. Brooks. I thought we were going to have a Mr. Brooks moment at the end where it's like, obviously he dreams about his daughter, like finding out his daughter's just like him. And in the moment at the end, his daughter played by Daniel Pennebaker slit his throat. And then like he wakes up and just like, oh my God, it was a nightmare. I thought that's what we're going to happen. Like I thought Ainsley was going to be like, okay. And then slices his throat or, or kills him. And that was going to be like, oh, him waking up and being like, oh, do I tell her? Do I not? I thought that's what it was going to be. I was actually surprised by the twist of her being him being like, okay, you killed Endicott. I was just trying to protect you, but I'm your brother. I'm going to be here for you. We're going to figure this out. And then she's like, the reason why she came here, she opens up her jacket. She's covered in blood. She's like, I blacked out again. She's like, I'm sorry. I didn't know where else to go. So it's like, she potentially killed him. I mean, she, you know, because Malcolm literally went through a very similar thing last season. Like, well, he couldn't sleep and it was kind of losing his mind. So it's like, did she kill someone or was it a situation where maybe she stumbled across a body or some, something like who knows? Because now this is worrying Malcolm because it's going to be even more. He's going to have to potentially cover up. Now Ainsley also knows the truth. Now it's going to make a little bit more sense. But now that she knows that potentially she's got, you know, this might be a situation where it's like she's been doing it subconsciously. But maybe it might get to the point where she's like, hmm kind of got a taste for it now like because this potentially could be two victims under her belt once again we don't know what the circumstances are if we're lucky it's maybe like an animal or something like maybe that side of her came in came out but she did it to an animal instead of a person like i said maybe she stumbled across a body so like maybe the next case they get it's like oh ainsley is she a potential suspect we got to see if there's any of her dna here like Maybe the killer inside of her, you know, it kind of all drove her insane because she was, like, not getting enough sleep. So, I, I, I don't think it's going to be as clear-cut of, like, she killed somebody. But I think when things are all said and done, I think it's going to make... Malcolm a little more worried about like okay now she knows the truth and what this can mean especially because she's been spending time reading her dad's journals too so I'm sure that's having an effect on her considering like the PTSD she's going through like the suppressed memories plus like diving deeper into like her dad's psyche which I'm sure can't be good for hers so some interesting interesting developments I am so curious to see where this is going to take us going forward into the next episode but really, that's all I want to talk about. Until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.